catch up with some of South Africa's coolest kid authors reading to us from their own exciting books with a whole lot of fun surprises going down. Hosted by Nandi Madida, it's Nickelodeon's Let's Read, a Mandela Day special in partnership with the Gauteng Department of Sport. Nickelodeon Africa has partnered with the Gauteng Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation in support of the Nelson Mandela Day and uh, five inspirational young authors to curate the fun and Nickelodeon's Let's Read special. Now, the special will focus on encouraging literacy amongst kids and will also include interactive arts and craft tutorials, dance and music performances. For more on this, we are joined by the MEC for Gauteng's Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation, Mbaris Lope. MEC, a very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good morning. Can you talk about this campaign and the importance of emphasizing kids at an early stage to start reading? Literacy is such an important aspect for any country and especially a developmental country like South Africa is. And we thought it was that a great idea to partner with small kids uh, to celebrate Mandela Day because, as we all know, that Nelson Mandela was very loved kids. But on top of that, he also loved reading. He was an avid reader, and he speaks about how during his time in jail, he, mm. what kept him sane was to get locked up in a book. So we combined the two things, and we're now showcasing five of our youngest authors. I mean, these kids are truly amazing. And their age groups range from 8 to 12, 12 being the oldest one. And so that's what we're doing. We're showcasing them, and they will be reading from their own books as a way to inspire other young kids to start reading because we want to make sure that kids utilize the creativity that they have and the imagination that they have and begin to start writing books and make that cool. Yeah, I mean, you need to teach them, Yama. And uh, why is this a cause worth your vested interest, Mbali? I mean, why does it move you? It's, it's such a, a critical campaign. Like I was saying, I mean, we're in a, a country where people right now are, are depressed because of the COVID pandemic. But what we're trying to say is that there's so many other things that you can't do. Whether you're getting yourself locked in a book or you're watching a movie, you're, these things that you can do just to remove your mind from the realities of the COVID pandemic. Yeah. And let's get the young kids on board. And they're such a, an amazing grouping to work with. And like I said, we really do need to increase the levels of literacy in the country. Okay. Let's talk about our talented young authors. You've included uh, Bushem Tetwa, uh, Michelle Ngamangeng, uh, Ngadi Me to understand, and uh, Prince Mashawana and Lilum Fogeng. Why these young ones uh, specifically? So those are the young people who have written books. And what we do, you know, that part of the mandate of the department is the creation of libraries throughout the country mm. and taking care of them. Okay. So we do showcase various authors, whether young or old, but obviously these are the youngest ones that we have. And I mean, at that age, when you're 11, who's thinking of writing a book? I mean, these kids are amazing. Yeah. Our youngest one is eight. So we thought, no, wow. let's profile them, let's get them out there, and let's get, use them as examples of how we can motivate other young kids to get involved. And we also now want to take their books and turn them into animation books. So. And I suppose it'll make your job much more easier seeing the drive and the ambition uh, from these young people. I mean, eight, eight, yeah, eight, eight years is a very, very tender age for you to be starting showing your own passion. So what are some of the things, I mean, regarding reading and literature in our communities have you witnessed, uh, especially the experiences, man, that, that validate the existence of this project? So you'll know, like these young ones, Part of the content that they cover, which is quite interesting, they cover things like bullying, uh, which is still quite rife, not just in the country, but generally globally. So they cover things like bullying, building up your self-confidence, and, it's, and I, we really can see that these are the issues that kids are dealing with at such a young age. So through their books, they're able to cover that and assist other young kids to build their own confidence. And this is such a critical characteristic to build from a young age, because even when you're older, we need to have the confidence to build into a particular career or go for a particular dream that you want to. You do need that confidence. So the, the sooner we build that as a characteristic, the better. Yeah. So how are primary school kids from the various disadvantaged communities going to benefit from this? I mean, what is the criteria and the solution model? So what, I would like, what we do within our libraries, we have various reading programs. 
And you know that our libraries are all over the province. Uh, they're located in, in our townships in the main, because that's where we want to focus on getting people to be able to access books. We have various programs there. We've also integrated Abokoko, Namunkulu, because people have this misconception that you need to know how to read to visit the library. And what we've said is that that's not the case. So we involve, we integrate the elderly, because they are the ones who used to tell stories. So I grew up with people who used to tell a scene so and this is what we want to, to get people within society getting used to. So we've integrated the old ladies, and they are able to assist us to work with the ECDs that are within the localities. They bring in the young kids, and they just tell them storytelling. And the critical part about this is that just through the storytelling, you're able to transfer our languages to the young kids, but also critical life lessons that they're able to get. But also the libraries also serve as a platform for those who are in school now. And because, as we know, we're under the COVID pandemic, people can be, accessed to, can be able to access Wi-Fi within our libraries because it is provided for free. And what we're doing together with the Department of Education is that we have now bought the books that kids are, require within the school, within their curriculum. So both within our physical libraries and our virtual libraries. We've made sure that the books are accessible for them. Yeah. You know, it's Mandela Day today, and uh, so many campaigns uh, focus on giving back. So how are you hoping that this will contribute to the lives of young people in South Africa? We really are hoping to capture the imagination uh, and to inspire them to read, to write, importantly. And we really do hope that in them seeing themselves and other young kids and their abilities, that if, if an, an eight-year-old can write a book, then it shows them that they too can be able to. So all the resources that, they, that they've got, they've got the imagination already. All they need to do is really just to put pen to paper and the department will assist them through that process. Any young kid who has an interest to write a book, the department is there to assist them. Okay. And, and what lengths would the Department of Arts and Culture go to uh, to ensure that reading is not just a school-related activity? Absolutely not. So we launched one of the most exciting things that we launched with our virtual library. And you'll know that within that library, we have various books. Outside of just school books, we've got um, your fiction, your non-fiction books. And also we're getting into gaming now because we also want to get young kids within our localities involved, okay. especially in my township involved in the East Spot. So our libraries are no longer just libraries where it's just books only. We see them really as avenues where there should be as much developmental uh, recreational activities that are taking place for people truly to enjoy themselves. So we could be there to go play, to be engaged in gaming as part of eSports. You can be there to go listen to a story being told. You could be there if you want to utilize it to study, if you want to write a book. There's so many things that are uh, visible that we put there. And as you know, that libraries will be opening quite soon, which we're quite, we're quite excited about, so that people can be able to enjoy these various things that are there. And we get the young kids away from the streets, because that's what's happening now. If you go through the townships and so forth, we are battling to get people to adhere to the COVID restrictions. But by engaging them within developmental programs, you're able at least to get them into something that is positive, where they're able to be safe, and our libraries will, will provide that safe confinement where they can be. But please don't have to follow the COVID restrictions. If you're not going to be in my library, you're more than welcome to sit in the custody of your home and visit our virtual library. All right. MEC, we appreciate your time and we appreciate uh, the government's efforts of, uh, you know, spreading literacy in South Africa. I mean, it's not just, uh, I mean, teaching a young child is not a duty that is confined to parents and the teachers, uh, but the whole society as a whole. Thank you so much for your time. We just spoke to the MEC for Houdings Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation, Balisope, on the Nickelodeon's Let's Read specials. Now, the young authors who are backed by the department will showcase extracts of their published works. Let's take a, a quick break. We'll have more in a moment.